Hey everyone and welcome to a new edition of Tech Tip Tuesday where today we're going to go into a little bit more depth with Smart Learning Suite online. Now I recently made a video about Smart Learning Suite where I kind of showed how you can take a Google Slides presentation, um, put it into Smart Learning Suite, use it on your smart board and get your students kind of into that presentation and able to interact with it. Um, and basically using it kind of like a, a digital whiteboard from their seats. Um, it's a very similar um, concept as Pear Deck, um, which I've talked a lot about that as well. However, today I decided to go into a little bit more depth in terms of actually using Smart Notebook files in Smart Learning Suite, because I know that a lot of teachers either develop their own Smart Notebook files um, and are using Smart Notebook, um, or you're, a lot of people buy these files on Teacher Pay Teacher. So um, if this is you, this will really show you how you can make those files um, far more interactive and engaging with your classroom. Um, if not, this is a great way to sort of see how these tools can work. So. Um, also as kind of a precursor, Smart Learning Suite Online is an appropriate tool to use really for any age level um, or device. So whether you're kindergarten or 12th grade or whether you're using an iPad or a Chromebook or whatever, or maybe you're letting your students use their phones, this is a tool that you can use not that has no specific device requirements really um, and really works with just about any grade level. So just to kind of jump right in, I am on the Smart Learning Suite website already. Um, and as I scroll down, you can kind of see there's a bunch of stuff I've already done. Um, you can explore their resources, you can add activities. There's some great training available if you want to get into more depth with training. But I'm gonna hop right over to this. Now, um, I had a kindergarten teacher that I've worked with who buys some Teacher Pay Teacher materials online. Um, that are for smart notebook or the smart notebook files and so um, that's what we're going to be looking at because these are already smart notebooks so I'm not going to be starting there and creating new things I'm going to take these things that she has and show you how um, it works with this interactive tool so first of all I've already loaded the um, lesson in here I just have a copy of it that I'm gonna be working on. And when I hover my mouse over this file, it gives me two options. I can either start or it says I can edit. Basically start means I'm gonna start presenting it. So I'm not really ready to start presenting it. Um, I wanna go ahead and edit it first. You can always bump back to edit if you start it. Um, but I'm just gonna click on edit so that I can show you some of these features. So when I click on that, it's gonna show me all my slides over here on the left. And then it just shows me sort of a big preview here in the middle. Now, um, you'll notice that some of these slides on the left have this purple square in it um, that looks like kind of a tablet with a pencil. So those means that those slides have already had, um, they've already been converted to an activity. And I'll show you kind of what that is here in a second. Um, and a lot of these have already been converted. So the ones that don't have anything on it, that means that when the students log into this, all they're gonna get is just the slide. They're gonna be able to see it. They won't be able to do anything to it. They won't have any tools. You will be able to do things to it. So when you're on your on your smart board or your computer, you can still manipulate it and draw on it and do whatever you need to it. But for them, it's just a viewable thing. So these first two slides are just viewable. Um, but then I'm gonna come to this third slide, which has already been put in as an activity. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click edit because I want to show you how this works. So when I click edit, it's gonna kind of give me this little warning. It's gonna clear any activity. So if I already ran this with my students and I have responses saved, this is going to get rid of those. So that's just something to kind of consider. If you have responses from a previously, previously used um, file, I would make a copy before you start editing it and maybe preparing it for a different um, a different class if you want to keep those responses. That's sort of up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and still click edit. And so it kind of took away that this was set up to be an activity. So the first thing, it kind of gives some directions. Um, and this one actually, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this as is. I don't think this needs to be an activity. So I'm going to find a different one. Let me kind of scroll down here that has something for them to do. Okay, here we go. So this one, we're on slide number nine. I'm gonna click edit. Um, okay, so now it is loading a bunch of things on here and it's kind of showing some stuff. Now, anything I click on, um, it gives me this little drop down menu to the top right. Now, if I want the students to be able to move anything, 
um, in this on the screen when they get it because they're gonna have this on their device I need to just sort of leave that as is or if I click on that little drop down I can give it an infinite cloner so that it'll every time they drag something it'll basically still be there there'll be more objects um, but if I don't want them to be able to move anything which like this is the title I don't want them to be able to move that so I'm gonna click lock or the directions I don't want them to be able to move that I'm gonna click lock so I'm just going to go through on all these objects. I don't want the students to be able to move and click lock. So this um, frame that they're going to fill, I'm going to click lock on that. And then this little area uh, down here with the question, we're going to lock that. And then also this response where they're supposed to write a response, we'll click lock. Now all of these objects though, like these cupcakes, and I guess these are flowers and fish and pumpkins and other cupcakes, the students need to be able to move those. So I'm just gonna leave those ones as is. Now if I wanted to clean this up a little, um, I could actually go ahead and get rid of a bunch of these and then make it be an infinite cloner. But I think actually for this, we need this specific number. So I'm not gonna change anything with this. And then, so now because I want the students to be able to do something with this, I need to convert it to an activity. So down here at the bottom, there's this, uh, when I hover my mouse over convert to activity, it looks blue. And it gives me two options. I can either make it an individual handout activity, which means that every student will have this on their iPad and will be able to work on it on their own and I can see what they're doing. I can even give them feedback immediately as they're working through it. Or if I make it collaborative, it means it's kind of like the same concept of, you know, if everyone was working on the same Google Doc. So if, if I make it collaborative, whoever I assign to that, they're all gonna be you know, doing it together. So if I write on something, everybody sees it. Or if one student writes on something, everybody sees it. So it's a collaborative thing, which depending on what you're doing, one or the other one of these might be really beneficial for you. For this specific thing, I just want this to be an individual handout, so that's what I'm gonna click for that. So now this means that when the students get this, they will be able to drag these pieces around um, and I will be able to see exactly what they are doing. Um, now as I kind of go through, I can change some of these a little bit more if I want, um, but I'm just gonna sort of leave it as is. I'm not gonna change a whole lot more um, in order to kind of show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Finish Editing. And so I still have this here. These always kind of show you in terms of when you put them in um, or when you edited them. And then when I'm ready to start this with my class, I've got my kids in here. We're gonna go ahead and start this as a class. I'm gonna click on Start. And so then um, this is gonna start running and it's got, I've got it running on my smart board. Um, I'm also going to, and this is just sort of a side note, I, I like to have as much space as possible. I'm gonna click F11 on my keyboard and it's gonna make my screen a little bit bigger uh, or it's gonna get rid of some of the stuff I don't need. So it just basically makes my um, web browser full screen. So I've got this here um, and when I wanna get students on it, so my, I want my students to be able to see what this is on their device as we're going through it, um, which the benefit of that is, that means that you know students have this device in front of them that they are looking at and even though they can look up and see this on the screen, they have it right in front of them as well. So it's a little bit more engaging. It might be a little bit more interactive depending on how you set this up, but to get your students there, we're gonna click on this little icon that looks like people and then we're gonna click on this little square with the um, arrow shooting out of it. And it gives some directions. Now, the very first time you do this, students are gonna have to go to hellosmart.com. They're gonna have to um, log in with their Google account. So their school Google account, they will need to log in with. They're gonna need to put in this class ID. Um, and then as students start entering, you will start to see it populate with names. Now, once you have done this once um, on your devices, it's, it should store that information. So the very first time you ever do this with your kids, it might be a giant headache to get them all there, especially if you have younger students. I worked in a kindergarten classroom doing this and pretty much we had to go through and there was myself, the teacher and a para in the room and we went through and got every single kid on. It maybe took about seven or eight minutes, but they all got there. Um, so if you are, if that's your situation, you might wanna have a couple extra hands in your room the very first time you do this. But I would say if you're like maybe third grade and up, 
this is something that your students can probably do. And it's a good practice for them in terms of digital citizenship also, especially if they're third grade enough, knowing how to type in a new web address, how to enter in their credentials, how to type in a class code. Those are all skills that we want these kids to learn anyway. So it's a nice practice. So. Like I said though, the very first time you go through and do this, it's gonna be a little bit more work, but then for in the future, if you just bookmark this, so if you, when you have your students go here and you have them bookmark hellosmart.com, whether they're on an iPad or a Chromebook, um, then the next time they go to it, they're just automatically gonna be loaded in. It's gonna save that class ID. Hopefully it will save their credentials. Maybe not, depending on how their device is set up, um, but it should save a lot of this. So the second time it shouldn't be so much of a headache. But as your students join, when I click on that little thing icon with people, it'll show all their names here. So you can kind of verify who is there and who is not there um, also in order to know what is going on. The other thing is actually quite kind of as a side note, when I click on this icon with people, this allows me if I need to last minute, like maybe I forgot to change this into an activity and I want the students to be able to, to write on this slide. This is just the title slide, so I wouldn't really want that. But maybe I would, if this is the first time ever I'm ever doing this and I want the students just to kind of practice using some of these tools before we get to a page where they actually have to do something that um, follows the directions I just want them to get to play with it um, I could click here where it says individual handout activity and then it will immediately convert this slide into that handout um, so that they can do that so if you forget to add it or you want to add it for whatever reason if you click on that icon with the little people you can kind of change um, how the students are going to get this slide on their device. The other thing is, is I can change the pacing. Um, generally speaking, when I'm in a classroom and I'm teaching, I want to keep the students at teacher paced. That means um, that their device is only going to show what I, what slide I advance to. If I want the students to be able to work at their own pace, like if I have some students that work really fast and I want them to be able to work ahead on their own, if I switch it over to student paced, that means that the students will have control to move forward and back in the slides um, on their own. I can still see what they're doing, but they can move forward and back on their own as well. We're gonna keep this at teacher paced though. Um, and let's click off of this. So you'll see right away, I've got some tools over here so I can click um, to drag anything. I've got my pencil if I wanna mark it up or the eraser. Um, this slide really doesn't have a whole lot to it. So let me go ahead to um, the slide that I edited earlier. I think it was slide number nine. Okay, so now we're here on this slide number nine. Now, um, if I had students on here, um, when I click student progress across here at the top, we'll see it's showing me I don't have students, so I'm gonna exit out of that. Across here at the top, it would show me all of their names. Um, and I could click on their individual um, names to see exactly what they're doing on their slide in real time. Um, I can also interact with that, which that's one thing I really like about this. If you're a Pear Deck user, one thing you'll immediately say, well, I can do that with Pear Deck too. I can see what they're doing immediately on the slide. It's in real time, which is great. However, what I can do with this is if I open up a different student's screen and I'm looking at what they're doing and I think, oh man, they forgot to do this or this or this, I can actually grab my pencil tool and mark up something on their slide or maybe circle something to tell them to recheck that um, and then they see it just on their screen. So it's, it's a way for the teacher to interact individually with students as well. So I can give immediate feedback. So Pear Deck, I can see what they're doing and I can maybe verbally say, hey, great job. Or there is a tool on Pear Deck where I could leave them a little message and say something. However, on this, I can actually mark on their um, page too. So if I want to circle something or highlight something or maybe correct something for them, um, I can mark up on their page. I can also get the teacher handout. So if I click on teacher handout, my screen is gonna show that slide. And this is the same slide that the students are getting. It's the same tools that they're getting. And maybe I wanna demonstrate how to do this. So if I'm telling them you know, what they need to do, like they need to move, <coughs> excuse me, the shapes um, into the, the frame here, um, I can demonstrate it. And so this is only going to show on my smart board. This isn't going to alter what's on their screen, but it gives them um, or gives me the ability to demonstrate it. So you can click, click on that teacher handout to get that. To get back to where we were, I'm just going to click on these little down arrows um, and then I'm back. So again, if I had students on here, I would be able to see my students listed here. 
Um, the last thing I just want to kind of point out when you're finished running this, I'm going to click on my little hamburger menu that I, um, this is the hamburger menu because it's like a bun and a patty and a bun. Um, and I can click end the lesson. I can also edit the lesson right from here. I could share it with maybe another teacher if I wanted to, I can make a copy, um, but I'm gonna just click end the lesson to end it out. Um, and then that will stop it on my students' devices too. And that's important to know, because sometimes you know the students get busy and they're kind of working through this and you need them to end. Like say, oh, we need to go to music right now. I just need it to stop so they get off their devices and we can go. If I click end lesson immediately on their screen, it will say the teacher has ended the lesson and they can't do any more to it at that time. If you restart that lesson, it'll bring them right back to where they were. Their answers from the previous time will still be there. Um, but you can kind of get right back into it, especially if you have a nice, like a smart notebook file that's kind of progressive and it has maybe multiple lessons for a whole module in a row. Um, it basically keeps it going. So you will always be able to see that um, their responses and your feedback and things like that, um, but it's always there. So that is Smart Learning Suite using some smart notebook files. Um, hopefully that kind of cleared some things up for you and kind of showed how this can work for the students. I know it didn't really show much of a student view, um, but this is one of those tools that you really need to see in action. I, I like making the videos and kind of showing you how this works, but please try this out on your own. Maybe even um, try it on your own, get your own iPad and kind of log in as a student so you can see if you're a little bit worried about how this is gonna work. But this is an excellent tool to really get your students engaged in the lesson. And if you are already using Smart Notebook files, um, there's very little you have to do to make this happen. So please give it a try. If you need any extra help or tips with it, please let me know. Um, I do think I'm gonna cover a couple more resources with Smart Learning Suite in the weeks to come. Um, but if there's anything specific you wanna know about this tool, please let me know. If there's any other tools you'd like me to cover in Tech Tip Tuesday, um, I am always open to those suggestions as well. So have a wonderful week, everyone, and um, give this a try.